I decided to get on the front fender instead of the front brake drum. I'm trying to do everything that uh, requires the most welding first. And uh, I figured that would probably be my uh, next best thing to attack. That he's not going to be able to do on his own. His front fender is too wide to fit in between. And uh, that's the width right there that the caliper set at. It's already kind of crushed somewhat down in between. But it seems like it's a little uneven. So I was about to go set it up with a block of wood and I got a rag in the vise and figure we kind of, we see if we can kind of crush it uh, a little bit more evenly and see if we can get the fit in between. And I did the same thing. These are kind of hard to set fenders up on because of the way the suspension moves. But anyway, this is the setup he has. Uh, these are fixed, these move. These kind of move half the distance the tire moves. So if the tire travels, say four inches, this is moving up two inches, so um, the best way to explain that. If I if I leave two two and a half inches of clearance, it'll take the front tire five inches or so to move before it would hit it. Follow me. That's fixed. That moves. That moves even more. So I got to try to tie to these. I can't tie to this. If I did, I'd have to do it way to hell up here, and it just wouldn't look good. So uh, again, the, and the other issue is. These are further apart than these, I think just because they're smaller. So I have to make some kind of brackets that come off of these. They have to come in a little bit on each side. And um, again, not be able to hit this and et cetera, et cetera. So I decided to uh, dig the trike out because it is like 60 degrees out. And I'm going for a ride to lunch in style on the, on, uh, the last day of February. So here's what I did on mine. Mine had some kind of drop downs on it. On the fender. This is the original fender that was on this bike. And then I made some plates up. Kind of kicked it in. Made it so it would clear. And you can kind of see how much room I have here. Uh, I want to say there's probably two inches between the fender. And uh, So I think we're going to try and mirror that same thing. And see how we make out. And probably about the same exposure. The rake on my bike is much greater than his, but I want to say we're, well, that one was already cleaned because of where the mount was, but I want to say it's probably 50-50 on it. So, well, I'm going to go ride, get some hardware, get a bike to eat, let the wind blow through my non-existent hair, and uh, we'll come back and start crushing the fender and getting that in there and start making some mounts. Squish that sucker down there. So I got you know, play going that way. I kind of mount, was going to go uh, tape it to the wheel and start making some brackets, but the only thing I noticed is that the radius of the fender and the radius of the wheel are pretty far out, you know, it's not really tracking very good. Uh, I don't want to make a mess out of this, but the same token, um, you know, aesthetically it's kind of kind of fuggly in a way. So I want to see maybe about, uh, we could stick it in a shrinker in the shrinker and see if we can kind of walk that curve a little bit. If it didn't have that lip, probably wouldn't be a problem, but uh, I don't know. Let's go try um, between where the dents are to see if um, we can just kind of maybe kind of curve it a little bit better. Let's see what happens. All right, so I, I worked this the very bottom part of the lip, the, bat, the bottom quarter inch, and of course it, it it's better. Let's see if we see if we mount it right about there. It seems to follow the same circle, roughly, and uh, he may carve it down too afterwards. But I wanted to give it some kind of chance to be at least fairly close. The only problem is it makes it so that uh, you know, it wrinkles the side of it because the metal has to have somewhere to go. <clears throat> if that lip wasn't there, I'd be able to go much further up into it and shrink it. But uh, again. You know, you're working on what you got. So, um, you know, and they're gonna do body work on the tank, maybe do body work on the fender too, kind of work it a little bit. But let's see if about uh, getting this thing taped into place and uh, start to get some brackets made up. All right, so I moved a little fast forward. I'm gonna try to get some stuff done. Uh, made up some brackets for that and uh, whittled them out and bent them and aligned and traced and put a fender on and off half a dozen times and uh, try to get their uh, best location I can for it. And that has to kind of do one of those and 
twist it into place, but it's going to go something like like that right there. So I got to fine tune it and uh, grind the chrome on the back side where I'm going to weld it to and uh, give us a good marking to go by. Then I'll clamp them into place see if we can get a couple, a couple attacks on them. I have the suspension uh, preloaded so that it basically, you know, the, the weight of a rider on there kind of guesstimate where that front end would be. Uh, again, it's just a guesstimation. So uh, let me uh, get some polish and get that marked out and uh, continue on. So that's kind of what it looks like it's all in place um, with no, no weight on the front end. Actually, my, uh, my straps might be pulling it down a little bit, but uh, that's kind of what the best I was able to go get it. Again, I'd like a fender that had a little bit more of a curve to it. And uh, well, at least that can be changed later. But uh, that's as close as I can get it with what I have to work with. And he's just also worried about just trying to get a sticker. So. And as the suspension travels, again, there is, it's got to be, I want to say there's three inches in between there. So roughly that front tire would have to move. That would have to move about six inches for that to ever touch. And that's never going to happen. You don't have that much travel in those springs. I would say you're probably going to be lucky if that's got three inches of a uh, collapse in it. So we're going to go with that. All right, now we're on to uh, front brake. Yeah, it's gonna be kind of a picture of a picture, but uh, you get the you're gonna get the idea. Uh, we're working on the brake drum, and unfortunately I can't blow it up in one, all in one shot. But this is what we're looking to go make. We need this lever that goes across. So it's got it's welded on the back uh, fork. It has a pivot. It has a pivot back there. So it kind of pivots on a bolt. Looks like it bends behind it, goes across, and it keeps the brake drum from spinning. Um, this brake drum looks like uh, it looks it's allowed to rotate a little bit as the suspension moves. Whereas on my trike, I had to make it fixed, so it is missing uh, this apparatus to kind of drill into the drum from stop it from turning. But it does have that that boss right there with a cable to go down through and I think we gotta go to the top picture now it's rotated I can rotate you guys too so you can kinda of see there's that boss the cable comes down and then grabs the lever right there so he's got a shifter that we're gonna try to modify for the lever for the cable to grab and pull straight up and through and then we still have to go look into making that guy so that's probably gonna be my my main concern we're gonna try to get that so it looks like it's in normal ride position I'm kind of judging by where the where the forks are and where the where the rocker are that um, it looks like it's gonna go straight across to the brake drum and the brake drum between the axle and the bolt seem to be paralleling the axles so we're gonna be kind of looking like and here's the same deal that guy that guy we're gonna want something that kind of comes up right to here and the ambulance goes by. So we gotta try to come in. Looks like. Probably right in that area. We have to try to figure out a way to make uh, something to stop the brake from, from spinning. So I'm gonna go pop the wheel back off and uh, look on the inside and see what we have for uh, meat or girth. Uh, I guess worst case scenario, I could probably use this. Um, if there's nothing behind here or but I think that's steel I might be able to to weld something right to this but uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves let me go pull that apart pull the drum off and we'll look out and see what's inside it right, so I popped that drum out of there massive huh and uh, looked at it it's steel it feels like steel anyway that's uh, chrome plated and I thought about welding to the outside of it then I also thought about why don't we just drill right through it if we have room and I think so I think I can kind of tuck right under that brake shoe and we'll go with like a shoulder bolt. Something like that. You know, but coming through the other side. And this is a lever that he had brought over that he kind of wanted to use to tie back. So I just got to open that hole up a little bit and we'll put that 
on the inside of it and uh, people will do a couple of a couple of washers and then we'll do a jam nut on the outside of it and you got to figure that much of it's already going to be used up so it won't be uh, too bulky out the other side of it you know so uh, let me uh, get the brake shoes off of there actually I'll probably mark them with a marker where the end of that shoe is right there and then we'll try to make sure that that head clears the shoe and then kind of go from there. Right, so let me uh, get to getting. So I got that drilled out and uh, put in there. I actually uh, shaved a little bit of the top of the that's, uh, shoulder bolt. I actually put two tacks on it. I figured why not um, make it a lot easier to tighten. You'd have to get a, take it apart put an Allen wrench on it every time. So now I got to jam that on it. Two uh, brass spacers and uh, that should make for a good mounting bracket. So if we're gonna go put it all back together and then we're gonna go and try and figure out what kind of bends we need to go do to attach it to uh, this rear tube of the um, front end. So let me get all that back together and uh, we'll see what it looks like. All right, so I put all that back together. I got the rear mount made and welded on there. And uh, I think it's a quarter inch. Well it on both sides. It looks pretty decent. There's where the pivot is on the bottom. Unfortunately, I, I kind of screwed up because as the suspension, you know, if you're doing a wheelie, it pulls away from it. But if you, if you collapse the suspension, it's going to hit. So, well, I was going by the picture that was in there. And uh, maybe they have more clearance between these two, but I do not. So I have to just take this lever, back it up some, drill another hole, and uh, index this thing back a little further. And the other thing was uh, we were supposed to go and I kind of cut the end of this off and we use it for the lever. And it was supposed to be a good fit. Unfortunately, it is not. It's, uh, it does not really fit that well. It'll, I crank down on it as much as I can, but even with that, it skips. Watch me do it again. You know, it's it's not a just not gonna make it. So uh, he's gonna have to go probably get another lever. Probably get another lever with a you know some kind of correct mounting on the end of it for a cable anyway. But uh, you know, since me putting time into this and and then what are you gonna do with that? Cut it, modify it, turn it. You know. I wouldn't trust it after slicing it and welding it. You could actually even see that it's like an egg already, unfortunately. So, um, we, uh, the clock's still ticking again. Um, we've been talking back and forth. We, were, we thought we were going to be done at this point because we uh, ran out of, uh, uh, you know, how much money you wanted to spend on the bike. And this is, this would have uh, finished it up. But we're going to go a little further. We're going to do some other work on the rear fender and uh, the seat. But uh, let me get this back off of here and uh, redrill that, index that a little bit further back. And you gotta remember anyway, wheels always going forward. That's always gonna be pulling on the brake. So even if it's sitting down here, it's uh, not gonna be an issue. It's not like it's gonna flip backwards. If anything, it always wants to go this way. You know what I mean? So uh, let me get that apart and uh, take care of it. Also, he needs to get his correct hardware. I did not have a shoulder bolt that was short, so. I had to stack washers and I put a wing nut on it just kind of to claim its location. But again, he's gonna chase hardware. That one's fine, but that's, that needs love. I'm gonna tell you, custom work sucks. <laughs> All right, so I shortened that bracket, drilled another hole, and uh, everything looks good. Clearance will be good for this lever. Uh, so here's the problem, you ready? So if you're gonna go do a wheelie, See it? So you can have the capacity where the brake drum pops the other way. Hmm, what do we do about that? <sighs> I noticed on the picture that they had a stop on the brake drum. I think it was here. I don't know why it would be there. Yeah, the other thing is to try to change the angle so it's more like this. That's what I get for going by the picture, right? I should have went by my own thing. And this, of course, is all finished welded on the front and the back. But I don't think I have much of a choice. What is my choice? 
Where isn't? Make an arm with a curve in it. Will that do anything for you? Not really. Because if it doesn't matter what this does, it's at that point to that point when they're in a straight line, it has the capacity of popping. Uh, and you kind of, kind of need the brake drum. You can't. The drape, brake drum kind of has to stay roughly in this direction because of where this cable is going to be exiting. You know, you can't have the cable shooting like that or. Decisions, decisions. Nothing they can really do about it. Cut that off, lower it down, redrill the bracket, make it shorter. Just do it all over again, in other words. So I give her a Russian too, you know, say like, oh, I'll I'll tack it. Nah, it'll be fine. The picture shows it's good. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna go think about it a little bit more and make sure that um that is not going to be an issue. And uh we'll kinda go from there. What if I was to can I weld just an L on this bracket? Use this everything the same, come up with an L that'll locate it down. Maybe I can do that. Right? That's gonna be tight. Now, let me think about that. Maybe I could beef up this bracket so that it does that. So that. I don't know. I gotta look at it and we'll figure it out. I'll turn you back on when I do. Alright. Well, I had to do what I had to do because I couldn't leave it the way it was. So, a couple of things I ended up doing to uh, cure it. Well, hopefully cure it. I haven't run it all the way down in a down position. That's the original hole, that's the new one. So I was able to kind of clock the whole thing back further to give me more room around where the lever will be. That was the first part of it. And then the top bar was too short. So the piece that I cut off, I re-welded back on, but I welded it on on an angle so that that arm doesn't want to stay as straight. It has a little bit more of a, you know, instead of being like this, it's like this. It gives it um, less of a capacity to want to flip backwards because the angle it's on. So right now it's fully extended and he's going to, uh, I, I talked to him about this already, he's got to make stops that go inside of here to only allow the, the front end to go down so far because what happens is the two bars kind of crash into each other. So, what did I want to show? <laughs> oh, and I flipped it around too. This was that side and that is that side. So I flipped it around so that this will have more clearance around these two guys. Where before it kind of went up and jogged over faster and over and was kind of rubbing on those. So that is good. Something I want to show you. Oh, it's all, the, you can't, it doesn't have the capacity now to want to, you know, to pop back the other direction at full, at full wheelie. You know, that's as far as it's gonna go. So let's go let her down. You see the fender travel too. All right. All right, so now it's sitting on ride height. And then we got this much distance now between the lever. So as it goes over bumps, it, it does get closer. But I don't think it's ever going to get close enough for the body of that lever to run into there. I think now I have more than enough room as this goes and you know, goes and hits a bump and rocks down. And if it does, I don't have a solution for it because that's about as far as I can go. I don't know how much more we can do because any more I go that way, it causes the other problem. So, um, well, yeah, the other thing I can suggest in the future, I know Danny has access to it, is uh, maybe replace this with an adjustable con rod so you can kind of tweak it uh, as you need, but you got your two mounts where you need them to go. But I think that's good. I think it'll, it'll uh, do the job. Uh, Again, you know, 
custom. All right, so I think I have all that buttoned up. I can't do anything with the lever. You're so gonna have to get another lever for that. And um, what are we gonna go do now? I think uh, we can go back and jump on mounting the rear fender and uh, wanna weld a couple of posts on the seat. I get to talk to each other in between making this. How do I do this? I pull that. So those two hinges and that pin is not going to be able to support the seat. The seat needs something more than that as far as um, what is actually taking the weight of the seat. So I think what we're going to do is probably just going to weld four larger nuts and then what you can do is you can put like um, on your hood when you shut your hood and you get those little rubber um, stoppers that you can adjust the hood with probably do the same with the seat so you can have them come in and you know hit a couple of pockets on the seat under there and you can kind of tweak it yeah, it's dark but there's probably uh, eh, an inch it looks like an inch and then the front curls up higher but we'll make a couple of those and that'll take the load of the seat and he can tweak that when he wants to so let me get started on that and uh, the rear fender and I got to look into the rear fender for what we were doing, what we had to go drill. Yeah, it's good to do something easy. I got to push my elbow on it. There we go. I ran them up a little bit, so it's got a little bit of tension on them. But I just kind of put six of those around there. And again, he's going to change those out to the kind of um, the pads that you use underneath the hood. Well, that's my suggestion anyway. Um, and it kind of lined it up to the direction of the pan, so it points at good sections of them. And, you know, of course, these two facing up on the back. So that should take care of that. Now we got some rear fender uh, deal to take with, take with, to deal with. I'm not quite sure what we were doing, actually. Um, I'm going to mount it in taillight, I think. Not sure. So uh, I'm going to go uh, bring the... Get the back fender, put it in there. I know I gotta notch it for where the chain is. I could deal with that first. We'll slip it into the hole and then we'll look at the uh, lighting assembly and see uh, how that looks. All right, so it's the next morning. Uh, not too much left to do uh, as the uh, budget allows. The last thing we wanna try to get is that taillight assembly knocked into that uh, Harley fender there. And I guess that's a... Uh, uh, a Harley fender and taillight setup that he bought new repro kind of deal. I did notch around where the chain goes. I'm showing it or not. Anyway, there's a notch there above that fender. To uh, give it some room for suspension travels to uh, clear that. Right there. I got a little overzealous on that, but uh, rather have it have a little extra clearance, you know. Um, so I got to pop that fender back out of there. We're going to flip it upside down. I just was, we were trying to figure out, does it stay exposed, does it tuck right in? He mailed me a picture of what it's supposed to look like and the lens kind of pops out just a hair past the lip and then there's a, a fairly decent sized gap going around it. So uh, we got the heat going, uh, probably going to go get a bite to eat, then we're going to go flip that sucker around on a, uh, an exercise mat and uh, see if we can mock it up in a place and drill four holes. All right, so I got that fender off and I'm looking to punch holes in it. And uh, I was trying to figure out why I was having such a hard time on the bike trying to get it set up. You know, trying to get the, the recess right. Can you say aftermarket fender? That light is level. That's the fender that's going down on an angle. <laughs> oh well. So I'm gonna bump it up, bump it back to probably almost flush. And if he wants, he can cut. The, uh, the edge of it to make it straight again. But, uh, I'm going to leave that up to him. So uh, I'm going to go uh, scribe where those holes are and uh, try to figure out the best way to drill them. I don't know if I can punch it from here, make a dimple, and then try to drill it from the outside, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, so this is what I came up with. <laughs> well, that was that for a long drill bit. So I'm going to center drill it with um, from this side on an angle. Try to anyway. They're punched on this side and then once I have the hole through then I'm going to come back on the back side. So. Who 
says you can't drill around corners, right? You get another one of those down and flip it over and do it from the outside. And we're winding this video down. I just kind of finished up what I needed to do. Don't you hate when that happens? Over my stinking air hose. I, I can unplug it and uh, look there. The table will go down. I can't get it to go up. Anyway, um, the fender's all set. Uh, the bolts are loose. The tail light's just kind of sitting in there. And you can kind of see the difference on the angle there. And if he wants to cut the fender back, or if probably what you can do is maybe even take the brackets that are on the, the tail light, kind of bend this one this way, bend this one this way, and let the light kind of shift a hair. There's some play in the bolts, he should be able to get it out of there. But that's his call. And uh, just drill the hole for the for the uh, the horn to be mounted on there. And uh, that's the end of this trip. He is now going to have to go take it all apart. He's going to do the body work on the tank and clean all the chrome up, paint the frame, take it all apart, and do all the stuff that needs, obviously needs to be done to make it aesthetically pleasing, and then, you know, wire it, do all that happy stuff. My part is done. I was just uh, commissioned to uh, get some of the hard stuff mounted, and then that's what we got done. Uh, the other... We were supposed to do a sissy bar, ran out of time for that, and then we are talking about making some, you know, some metal patch panels to kind of cover this area in so it blends in more and uh, fill in the hole back in here. But uh, we ran out of time, we actually ran out of time by about two hours, I'm two hours over. What we talked about, because I had to do that, that front um, brake drum twice, I ate a lot of time last night, but uh, he should be able to bolt the sissy bar on and stuff. Now it's up to him to, uh, Take the candle. Take the flame. What's, what's the saying? Carry the torch. How's that? I'll go with that. And uh, complete it up. And uh, I recommend that he puts some stops inside the springs on the bottom and the top. It, the final will keep on going until these two smack into each other, which is not too good. Um, and then if you hammer it down all the way, we collapse the suspension. Um, this will touch this, but I can't rotate it any further back without worrying about it flipping back the other direction. And uh, that, at that same time, it's just when all these springs are, all the gap is closed up in between here. So if he either puts a spacer on this spring pack to just make them a little bit uh, more proud, or put something inside there so that it limits how far it can bottom out. And then the same on the top. If he makes something that's about, I don't know, half to three quarters of an inch shorter, like a piece of brass pipe or something, so that if he does go do a wheelie, they can only drop so far and not relying on that front end to uh, be the, something has to be the stop other than two things of metal smashing into each other, you know? So that is his call. No, uh, no warranty is given on this. I just did the best with what he had to give with me. This stuff can get kind of squirrely, you know. And again, he has to get a different brake, a different lever for this because this does not fit this correctly. So that's it, guys. If he uh, gets to the point, we gets it all put back together and painted and uh, running and uh, running down the street. I'll uh, make another video of it. And I'll attach it to this playlist. But for now, I just want to thank everybody for uh, taking a little journey with me. I kind of like working on stuff like this. It's different, you know. I'm not much for working on mundane, boring stuff. And, uh, you know, I'd rather do some weird stuff like this that makes you think a little bit as you're putting it together. So, again, later, guys. All right. The, the torch didn't go out. It's still going. <laughs> Got more money to spend, so we're putting a little bit more work into it, and uh, he wanted to enclose underneath the seat so the seat looks a little bit more um, consistent, or I don't know what you want to call it, um, blends in more without all air gaps underneath it. So I already uh, did the back section, you can kind of see here, I made a paper doll, fitted it in, welded it, and ground it, and uh, I figure what he can kind of go do is put that beading, that, that door edge seal probably be the best thing to put on the edge of that and now we want to try to move on possibly to this area and start closing some of this in 
Uh, I could make it look perfect, but it would take me 10 hours aside, and you know, you can make it look dead nuts. I have an hour to side, an hour to apply to each side to go and do that for how much we're getting paid to go do it. So um, it may be a little on the quick and dirty side. But uh, let's uh, move forward and see what we can kind of get accomplished and uh, go from there. Yeah, I got one side one done. And I got it tucked under the seat. Again, we're trying to whip it out as fast as possible. It's the airbox in place. That kind of hides all that stuff where you don't see it. Could have got it a little bit further like this, but when you're rushing, sometimes it ain't too good. Plus, this has got oil up to here, so I'm very lightly trying to not bake this pipe when I'm trying to, to tack it on there. And then he could run that, uh, again, that same uh, that beading over it. That'll probably take most of it up anyway. And it probably would look better if it was out here filling this gap in. But my fear is if you ever got into a wreck or an accident or something, I can't uh, be good conscious having this. This will cut you pretty good, you know. So uh, at least it's kind of, it's all going to be keyed underneath the seat where you don't see it. I was slicing your leg off because of, you got sharp metal out here, you know. So. Ain't great, but again, try to knock it out in an hour. And now we gotta make the same thing, kind of over here, cover the same deal, and then uh, should be done. So I did end up finding some of that, um, that pinch molding I had left over, some scraps. So that's kind of the idea I was talking about. It just makes it so that all oh, that edge is softer on top. All right, you're not really gonna see any of that anyway. But uh, maybe even put a piece underneath here. I think would probably make for a good look when he takes it apart. And uh, this one's got too sharp of a bend to go make, but I'm not gonna worry about heating it and trying to get at the seat. Um, I could have done better here. Unfortunately, I ended up putting the mounting hardware for the tank, and these are just gonna have little little screws in it. These big things are not gonna be here eventually. They're just gonna be probably a screw and a screw with a uh, a flat and a lock washer on it. And that'll be the finished deal. Cover's kind of flapping, but uh, not bad for a quickie, I guess. The back came up pretty good. And again, it's gonna have a sissy bar coming off of here anyway, so some of this is gonna get kind of blocked. And on this side. That's what you get, I guess. So I'm gonna uh, drop it down on the ground, on the ground with we'll one last walk around, and uh, away it goes. Unless he calls me again. And that's how it's going out the door. I don't know. I like it better than it was when it came in. I think the my personal opinion. I like to see the ass end probably come down about maybe two inches. Get to squat a little bit more. Seems a little tall, but that's just my opinion, you know. Plus, it's on a lift, it makes it look a little higher because it's up in the air. So, by the time it gets the sissy bar on it, we'll, we'll elongate the back side of it a little bit. And of course, that body work and paint and everything getting cleaned up, the frame painted and, and whatnot. At least he's on his way, you know. Hopefully, we'll have it enough to ride this year he's not sure if he has to do um directionals or not i think 74 was a cutoff year for massachusetts for signals so we're not sure if he's going to need them or not or if you can get through without putting directionals on it goblin cooper wires clean his pipes up and the only area that really doesn't kind of flow very well is, is the fact that this kind of tucks in and then the seat comes out that little gap there. If that seat kind of curled, just tapered in a little bit better in the front, it actually, you wouldn't tell at all, you know. 
Most of those uh, two up seats back then were really thin, really skinny style. And they weren't meant to flip up like, you know, that one flips over, it's still open, so give you access to everything without having to unbolt it. All right, guys, on that note, now I am finally shutting down and I am gonna go wash my hands, go get me a pizza. Another happy customer.